Hello everybody, I'm Dan. In this video I'm going to show you how to map a drive letter to your Raspberry Pi 3 and that's so you can copy files back and forth easily and um, that's something that I have a need for especially with my Java tutorial series I'm going to be doing on the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, so if you watched my last tutorial I showed you how to um, install remote desktop on the Raspberry Pi 3 and of course now I've got mine as you know it's completely free no uh, no HDMI cables, nothing like that. So um, basically I'm going to open up the remote desktop there and I had, a, had an IP address of 10.0.0.35 connected to the Raspberry Pi here is connected to the Wi-Fi network. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and connect into that and let's uh, put in Pi Raspberry and we'll just go ahead and connect right up. So now we're emulating the Raspberry Pi over here. Um, the the main problem with with remote desktop and going into the 10.0.0.35 is that 10.0.0.35 is not a static IP address. It's dynamic, so it could change if if I were to reboot my uh, hub or something like that. So um, what we're going to do first is I'm gonna open up this command prompt. And if you don't have a command prompt, uh, you can create a shortcut really quick. On, the, uh, on your Windows desktop here. Just right click, go to New, Shortcut, uh, type in CMD, Charles Mary David, click OK and finish, right? And that'll get you a command prompt up there. Um, so I'm gonna open up the command prompt and type in ping. Ping is like basically just a network tool. Think of it like a submarine where it pings out and if it gets a response, you know, get a response in some particular amount of time. I'm gonna ping that IP address 10.0.0.35 and then put a minus T on the end of it there, which will keep the ping going there, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize that window down here, bring back up my remote desktop. And the first thing that we're going to do, I already had the terminal open in there, but if you're not familiar, here's the, the terminal inside the Raspberry Pi. And I'm gonna type in sudo apt get update. And what this will do is this will cause it to go out and update all the repositories and everything on the uh, for the Raspberry Pi so that any um, programs that we got installed um, will be able to go out and get new ones or updated or, or whatnot there. But we're just primarily interested in updating these repositories here. So repository list. Okay, now that that's done, I am going to uh, type in sudo which is the super user do essentially you know it's it's uh, the equivalent of like right clicking on a program in Windows and doing run as administrator super user gives you elevated privileges basically the root account so we can do anything we want and apt get um, apt get is basically uh, short for the advanced package tool get there and we are going to um, install a package called uh, Samba, which will give us some nice networking tools here. And we also need to get uh, the common, common bin too as well. Okay. Um, that goes out to these repo the uh, Raspberry, Raspbian repository and pulls down and installs those packages there. Now one thing I want to I want to show you here, right? So I'm going to do a control C to break out of this. And um, I should have done this actually before I installed those. And maybe, maybe it won't matter there. It's not quite done yet. Pinging the machine name instead of the IP address here. So, let's see, we're probably almost done here. All right, there we go. Well, no, I'm done. Yeah, I thought it was. It had me fooled there. Uh, just why this is installing, and now, of course, it's done. 
All right, so coming back out here to our DOS prompt there, um, just hit the up arrow, ping Raspberry Pi. You can see all of a sudden now that we've installed that, um, that if we ping the machine name, which is Raspberry Pi, let's come out here to the um, to the terminal. You can see that this this right here says Pi, and then at, and then because that's who's logged on. I'm logged on as the default user. Well, actually, the original user of Pi, and then the machine name is Raspberry Pi. So after installing the uh, the Samba and uh, the common bin there, um, now all of a sudden our Windows box can, of course, ping the Raspberry Pi. And it gets the response back from 10.0.35, which is the IP address there. Um, incidentally now, so if, um, if our Raspberry Pi, and it's out here on my network, right? And if we hold this over there, you can see it's got 10.0.35. Uh, 35 is the IP address connected into my Wi-Fi network. If that connects in and gets a different IP address, it won't matter anymore on that because now with remote desktop, right, we can go ahead and I'll just close out of this to demonstrate it and then fire it back up there. And uh, now we can just type in uh, Raspberry Pi, right? And it'll prompt us to connect. Pi and Okay, all right, so now we don't have quite enough set up to, um, to actually uh, go ahead and map a drive letter yet. So the, uh, the Samba package gets installed basically off an etc. folder off the root. So we can go like cd dot dot, right? That'll move us to the home folder, cd dot dot. That'll move us all the way back down to the root there. If we do an ls, which is essentially the same thing as dir, right? Only if you see just uh, different colored stuff with the ls command, right? We've got this etc. folder right here, okay? So we're gonna do cd for change directories to etc. And then if we do an ls again, right? We've got a bunch more files listed there. But the, uh, the one that we're interested in in this particular folder here is this is the Samba one right here, okay? So let's change directories to Samba and do an ls, okay? So we've got this file here called smb.conf and that's the Samba configuration files. So we're gonna do cp, which is copy, and smb, and you know what we, what we need to do is, well, I'll show you, let's do cp smb.conf to uh, smb. we'll just call it old, right? So permission denied, right? We don't have elevated, we don't have permission to basically do anything out, out outside of our Pi folder underneath home, basically. So we do CP, uh, so we need to use our super user do, right? SM, uh, CP, smb.conf to smb.old. All right, now we'll be able to copy that. If we do an LS again there, you can see now we've got our backup file there. So super user do, I'm, I'm just going to use leafpad to edit this file, smb.conf. Okay, so that'll pull up our configuration file here. Yeah, I can't grab that. There we go. Now I got it. All right, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for this uh, authentication section. Okay, so right in front of the authentication section, the first thing that I'm going to come down here is put in uh, security uh, equals. Uh, you know what I want to do? I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put a few spaces here. Security equals user. Okay, and I'm going to scroll down here to the share definitions. You see where this is read only? Yes, we want to change read only to no because we want to be able to read and write from this stuff here. Okay, save that and close out of it. Those are the only two things that we need to do inside of this file there. Um, now the last thing that we need to do is um, actually there's two more things we need to do. So we need to I might need to reboot the computer, reboot it or reboot the service, but I think I'm just going to try this real quick here. Um, password, sudo smb, password, and then a minus a, and then pi. So that'll that'll give us access to the, the pi folder for the username there. So um, let's enter on that. 
And I'm gonna put in the same Raspberry default password. Okay, good, it did add it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to reboot the computer. So I could do sudo uh, reboot, or it's the same thing as coming up here, shut down and reboot. I'm just gonna do sudo reboot from the command line there, terminal. And so while my Raspberry Pi is rebooting, we'll just uh, hit the up arrow there and we'll ping it. And then when it starts responding back, we'll know that it's, it's back up and ready to remote into. It's a pretty quick reboot. It usually only takes about 15 seconds. So. All right, and um, doo -doo -doo. if you've never mapped a drive letter before, I'll walk you through that real quick. A couple different ways using the Windows GUI, Windows Explorer, and straight from the command line there. Um, so we're back up here. I'm gonna go and connect back into it. Probably help if I put in the password. Okay, so before I map this here, you see we're logged in as the user Pi and then at Raspberry Pi. So basically, if we do an LS here, you'll see we've got the desktop downloads, pictures, Python games, videos, documents, music, public templates. If we come up here to the GUI file explorer, you can see these same exact folders here, right? Um, nothing in the desktop, a little bit in the documents and so on and so forth there, right? If we were to do uh, the documents. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, case sensitive. Sorry. Yep, so you can see there's some stuff in there too. All right, so that is the Pi directory there. So in Windows, we're going to open up our Explorer and you've got the map network drive right you can click on that and select map network drive i'm gonna select the uh the r drive for raspberry pi and just slash slash raspberry pi slash pi okay prompt for the username which is pi and then of course the uh the raspberry password that we set up Okay, and now you can see that we are, um, we can see those same desktop folders, documents, all that stuff there. Okay, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here to my C, uh, or just this PC, right? And I'm gonna right click on the P drive, or the R drive, and select disconnect, okay? Um, another way to do it is through the, the command prompt here, control C to break out of that, and do a net use and then double backslash and the machine name raspberry pi slash pi and that's the share right and that'll prompt us for the username which is pi and uh, it doesn't show you the password and that's perfectly normal okay hopefully I typed it right we'll find out here in a second command was completely successful so we can do r colon now uh, oh my gosh, I didn't even assign a drive letter. Let's get back over that. Um, I missed the R colon right here. I haven't done that in many years. Anyway, so now we go to R and we do a directory there and we can see that we've got all of our other stuff, directory documents, right, and so on and so forth. So I've got this file, cc slash blender. love Blender 3D, by the way, if you're interested in that. And Go back to Java, see Java. And I'm going to copy this file, um, background.jpg, right? And that's uh, just a simple little uh, the R. Okay. Um, coming over to R, we do a directory. You can see the Raspberry Pi background JPEG here. Pop back into the remote desktop, right? Do an LS, right? You can see the Raspberry Pi background JPEG that I've made there. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just change my, I'll close out the terminal here. I'm gonna change my background to the image that I just, uh, and I want to 
select pi, all right, and there's my JPEG, and there we go. Okay, so now I can copy files back and forth, which is very valuable, especially in some of my larger Java programs there. Um, so that's basically how that works there. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that, get rid of that, that, and that, and that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.